about uh, another aspect in which comma is uh, functioning. The last uh, week's lecture was Pakatkana uh, Kamma Panchaka how the uh, Kamma is uh, giving its results uh, according to places. So here we now I have given it's like Pakatkana Gati Panchaka. Here Gati means the lives. The lives in which the Kamma functions. So actually what I want to mention through this lecture is a life of a being is an outcome of a Kamma. It's not that there is a life, there is something called life and Kamma affects it. It means the entire life is an outcome of Kamma but it doesn't mean that everything in the life is determined by the Kamma but life is a production of a Kamma. That is the main point that I want to emphasize through this. In Nidana Sutta of Anguttara Nikaya, the Buddha mentioned that beings are seen as results of Kamas. So he further elaborates that beings of the woeful realm, like the Niraya being, beings of the hell, hell beings, Petas and uh, Tirachana animals are seen, not because of Kamas originated by Aloba, Dosa, Moha, but because of the Kamas originated by Loba, Dosa and Moha. And also he mentioned the beings like Devas and humans and also all the other blissful beings of the blissful abode, abode are seen as results of Kamas that originated, got originated because of Aloba Dosa Moha but not because of the Kamas we got by Loba Dosa Moha. So the te- if you look into the teachings it may appear like he was referring to the abodes, the realms but actually he was referring to the beings. That means uh, beings are born. We can, we can see beings in suffering because of bad kammas. We can see beings with, in bliss, in happiness because of kusala kamma. Right? It doesn't mean that all the suffering and happiness in one's life is because of past kamma. This is calling about the birth of a being, like happening of a being. Why a being is existing in a blissful realm? Why we can find a human because of a past good deed? So this also leads to a, another very important aspect. When we want to get rid of the suffering, suffering which means the uh, life of uh, whatever form it is, the continuation of life which is called the suffering. So if you want to get rid of this suffering which is, uh, which is the sansara, what we have to do is we have to get rid of the karma. So in order to get rid of the karma, we will further explain that Buddhism doesn't go doesn't teach a practice which is against the karma because it cannot be cut off. So it shows up, it shows apart what are the causes of karma. The causes of karma are craving and ignorance. Even craving cannot be fully cut off directly. It has to be dealt with it is with its cause. So as long as the cause is there, result cannot stop, cannot be cannot be stopped. So so leaving the cause, what we can do with the effect is just suppression. We cannot just remove the effect as long as the cause is there. So we have to go to the root cause in order to remove all the effects. So Buddhism doesn't go, doesn't treat a practice, give a practice which is against the craving. It gives a practice, advocates a practice which is against ignorance. So that's why we have vipassana meditation, which explains about wisdom or knowledge which is against ignorance. So when ignorance is removed by means in terms of vipassana, the craving will have no opportunity to sustain, so then the karma will not have ability, opportunity to uh, give results, so the suffering will end. So the most proximate cause of a being is the karma. So that's why the Buddha mentioned in the Nidana Sutta, beings are seen because of loba, karmas, got by loba dosa moha, and some beings are seen because of the karmas because by aloba, adosa, amoha. So therefore, uh, normally we discuss, when we talk about karma in, in today's teachings, way of teachings, we talk about karma as a completely a separate chapter. So it means, but we have to think that karma, was, our lives are originated because of karma. So our root is the karma. We are born out of Kamma, Kamma Yoni, Kamma Bandhu, Kamma Patisarva. 
then there are it's but it doesn't mean that it's the only root only cause there are some reasons for karma as well so then we have to deal with the root cause so that is the avijja but we have to have understanding that this life is a production of karma it's not that there is a life and karma effect in this the entire life originated from the karma when we talk about upapatti bhava in buddhist teachings upapatti bhava upapatti bhava is about the life upapatti bhava equals to 32 Lokya Vipaka Chittas 35 Chetasikas they are associated and 20 or 18 Kamaja Rupa 20 or 18 Kamaja Rupa so this shows that according to the, our teachings the most salient or pivotal part in our life is the aggregates five aggregates we have all the five aggregates here because we have three aggregates in chetasikas vijnana is the one aggregate rupa is another aggregate. all five aggregates begot by or caused by karma so they are the main main part in our lives so when you want to explain what is a being according to theravada buddhism it is something which is originated by karma but based on this base we have different chittas utuja rupas chittaja rupas aharaja rupas kusala kusada kamas but base will be this so the first chitta of a being the life continuum of a being the final chitta of a being or oh, and also the basic rupas of a being why we call we are still alive because of jivitindriya all are because of kama or oh, kama the chejo the heat which protects our body so all are because of karma so therefore the entire life is a production of karma so that is why buddha could mention that is why yogi could understand so now we have a karma karma gives a vipa result is a life in other terms we call it vipaka but it's a life in another way we can call it a life but it doesn't mean everything in the life is because of karma i'm talking about the main part the basic part upon which all the other qualities are developed is because of karma so now this uh, uh because of uh, yeah the the life is uh, caused by this karma so i i lost the what i was going to say <laughs> so uh yeah the, this is uh, chitta chetasikas and rupas uh, which are brought by karma and this is uh, yeah anyway <laughs> so uh, kama is uh, the main part of a being and uh, that is also we have to keep in mind then but it doesn't mean that everything in the life is because of kama we are talking that the main the main part of the being uh, that uh, another thing is like uh, in our uh, previous lessons we talk about something called kama samangita if you remember kama samangita was referring to the energy of the life kama which can bring a new life new patisanti we differentiate two things kama satti and kama samangita kama satti is whatever energy which is left by kama so whether it produce a life or not if it has the ability to produce new chitta chesikas rupas this is called kama satti kama samangita is the ability to produce a new life so in those lectures we mention ka at one kama get ripens as an entire life entire life means the main life uh, blood of the life is because of uh, aggregates originated by karma so karma born aggregates we have these are the karma born aggregates khandas so they are the main part of someone's life karma born aggregates So that's what I mentioned in the one six zero fundamental ten point one six zero. Therefore, according to Buddhist teachings, a being is an outcome of a karma. Owing to the nature of the karma which beget the a certain being, he, he is categorized as a being of the woeful realm or a being of the blissful realm. So, if our origin karma is 
wholesome. We call we are born in Sugati, blissful abodes. If our origin origin kamma is because of origin kamma means the Pakistani kamma is Akusala, we call we are in the Akusala. In the Bahuda Sukha Sutta, the Buddha mentioned that it is impossible that a person will be born in an awful realm due to being endowed with wholesome deeds, and a person will be born in a blissful realm uh, due to being endowed with unwholesome deeds. What is possible is a person will be born in an awful realm due to being endowed with unwholesome deeds and a person will be born in a blissful realm due to being endowed with wholesome deeds. I gave the translation in a previous lecture about this sutta. So I just gave the reference here. Then another, now I come to another very important topic which is called Gati. Right? Gati. This comes from the root gum. Gati. So Gati is the normally the destination. The destination where we go after life. But it doesn't mean that this, this have to be understood philosophically. It means when we die and born in a certain life, that new life is the Gati. But it is not enough. For example, when we someone dies and born as a Deva, so his Deva aggregates, Kama born aggregates as a Deva, arises together with his birth. It's not that his aggregates are there, so he moves there. So therefore, even though in Buddhist literature we say Gati, it doesn't mean he is going to a place that already exists. Gati here means the aggregates which get originated with his birth. At the moment of Patisandhi, Patisandhi Chitta arises, for example, Patisandhi Chitta arises together with Chetasikas and it will be associated with Khamaja Rupa. So these all happen at the same time, together. All happen at the same time. And that is the time the being is born. Same time when they arrive, the being is born. So compare when we talk that the person in the previous life, conventionally we are calling, the person has done a certain karma, because of that karma these aggregates are born. So conventionally we say the same being is born. This is a conventional usage. So con 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 uh, uh, contemplating this which has not yet originated yet, we take it as a place. So we call this is the place one, we, one, one goes. Gati here means the aggregates, the karma born aggregates of the newly arisen being. So these are the realities which arises together with his birth, but we call it Gati. Another term for Gati is the, dis, uh, is the realm we are born in. Sometimes Gati refers to the realm we are born. For example, if someone is born in the Deva realm, that abode, that, 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 that space in which he is born can also be called the Gati. Sometimes Gati refers just for the arising of the Nama and Rupa for the first time. So these all refers to Gati. So if I look in the 161 uh, fundamental, Lokiya Vipaka Chitta Chesikal and Kamaj Rupas produced by mundane wholesome and unwholesome deeds are called Gati. It is also refers as Gati Gati. Gati Gati means its repetition. I think you have studied Rupa Rupa in, in Abhidhamma to show that they are the real Rupas. So likewise here Gati Gati means to show that it is the uh, to emphasize upon this. So it refers to actually this uh, uh, Kamma Bona aggregate. Sometimes the rising of Kamma Bona aggregate is also called Gati. Sometimes Gati refers to the place or space in which Kamma Bona aggregates arise. In that sense, it is sometimes referred as Sanjati Gati or you can also call Bhumi. So now we come into the chapter, I think most of you have studied in BAA. We study a chapter called Bhumi, right? Patisandhi, Kamma and Maranopati. So now we have to, I'm going to merge these all topics into this chapter. That's why the handout is quite la large. I'm not going to explain all, right? This is for your all <laughs> references uh, and useful for some BA, BA students. But unfortunately, this is the second semester <laughs> because the topic comes normally in the first semester. Maybe good for diploma students for the next year. So uh, this, uh, now we have three terms for the Gati. First is the Kamma Bon aggregates. Second is the arising of aggregates. Kamma Bon aggregates. And then third is the space in which these aggregates arise. 
Normally, this third meaning, gati, uh, space in which they arise, is also referred with the term gati. So when we have the term gati, it has few meanings. And this sanjati gati in the commentarial literature is explained normally if you go to the references in Pali. It appears to the place in the, in the space, the small space, space in which these aggregates arise. For example, in the human realm, the mother's womb is called the sanjati gati. And all, but when it comes to the uh, four mental aggregates, the commentary says it is the entire space, entire realm till the bhavaka. So therefore, merging these two two uh, fundamentals, I talked with my uh, friend also, Abhivansa friend also about this matter. So we came into the idea that uh, this sanjati gati also refers to the space. So, Sanjati Gati, if you go, if you go for uh, reference directly, you will find when referring to the Rupa, it is referring to for a small space where the Rupa happens, like the mother's womb, if a Deva arises in a certain chamber, that chamber. So, likewise, it is confined to a small space. But when you go into the Sanjati Gati of the mental aggregate, the commentary gives a different explanation saying that it's not just confined to a small space, it goes till the uh, bhavaka. Bhavaka means the neva sanya na sanyaitana. So taking this uh, explanation about sanjati gati in regarding the four mental aggregates, I have adapted this terminology here showing that to show the difference. To for, therefore the student, it's easy for students to distinguish the realm from the life. That is my main aim. Uh, uh, taking this term. So, from here onwards, the realm will be referred as Sanjati Gati. The realm or the place we are born. The aggregates, the Kamma born aggregates are referred as the Gati. Or Gati Gati or Gati. Right? So, what I want to emphasize is now we are talking, sometimes we talk about Bhumi, sometimes we talk about the beings in the Bhumi. So different I want to emphasize is Sanjati Gati, the nature of Sanjati Gati is determined by a universal law which has no relationship with our karma. That what I want to say is Sanjati Gati, for example, the human realm, natures of the realm, size of this realm, appearance of this realm is not decided because of our karma. It's a natural law. Then the Gati, these Kama born aggregates, these are exclusively determined by the nature of our karma. So that is why I am bringing this topic of, uh, topic of Bhumi. Normally we bring the topic, we call this topic Bhumi in the Abhidhammata Sangaha. I am not going to address this topic as Bhumi. I am going to bring it as Gati into this topic. So when I say Gati, it refers to the realm and also the beings who are born there. So Kamma is directly related to the beings who are born in this realm. And the realm has its own existence. For example, according to our Buddhist literature, realms beyond the third, from starting from the fourth Jhana Brahma realm. For example, Vehapala, Asanya Sapta, five Suddhavasa, they exist all the time. It doesn't mean they are permanent. They are rupas also arising and passing away momentarily. But they don't get disrupted according to our literature. So their structure, their nature, the universe, the nature of the earth, they are determined by a different natural phenomenon which is which has no relationship with our lives, with our karma. But the gati it means the beings who are born in this, they are fully determined, they are greatly determined by karma. Then I will also add another point called the yoni. I will come to that point. So today I am going to discuss about three aspects which govern our lives, which affects our lives. One is the nature of the world. One is the nature that affects the karma which affects our lives. And also then the species we are born into. That is another topic. So all three we have to understand together at the same time with distinction. So it will be our, our understanding is going to get clearer. 
So if I go into uh, the next paragraph, where we shall look into the two aspects of Gati in relation with Kama, two aspects of Gati. I'm not talking about the arising. I'm leaving up, leaving the second aspect. So first and the third, Gati Gati and Sanjati Gati. Henceforth, Gati Gati will be referred to the singular morphem Gati, and the place where Kama bone aggregates arise will be referred as Sanjati Gati or Bhumi. Right, Sanjati Gati or Bhumi. Sometimes English terminology realm, realm or sphere about these words. So the next topic says there are five types of Gati. You can uh, there are five types of Gati and Sanjati Gati. Buddha refers to the term Gati. There are five Gati. Then the commentary says this Gati refers to both the aggregates and the place where they are born. So place and the aggregates both. You can go into the, uh, I have given the references. So it refers to the, uh, uh, both the aggregates and also the space. So there are five Gatis, Niraya, Tirachana, Yoni, Petti, Visaya, Manusa and Deva. So all the Brahmas are included in Deva. Right, all the Brahmas are included in Deva, and the div divine being, divine beings mean mind made beings who are living between the human realm and the Deva realm are also included in Deva, the lower Chatu Maharajikas, and the Asuras, you know, as four kinds of woeful realms, right? Asura Nikaya is included in Petisya, in Peta. Asura is included in Peta. Right? So therefore, in other terms, you have studied the 31 realms are included here. So I am going giving emphasis not only the realms here, giving emphasis to the beings of the realms and the realms, right? Beings of the realms, because the thing I want to emphasize is the effect of karma. We are talking about karma. So how the karma is related to this topic, we have to understand. A very basic fundamental. Next topic. Next fundamental of the tradition is gati is produced and its natures are determined by karma. It's very important. Gati. So when I say gati. I'm referring to these matters. And also, there is Kama Bone matter. Keep in mind, it's not, not exclusively talking about Kama Bone matter. Whatever is developed on this, our Utuja Rupa, our mind, chitta, uh, our Kusala Kusala Chittas, our abilities, Chitta Rupa, all are developed here. So when I say Gati, I'm not exclusively, I'm not very exclusively talking about them related to this. It means our life. Right? It means our life. So I'm not only referring to the Kama Bone matter, but mainly Kama Bone matter, but all the other Rupas and Namas which are all getting developed based on this Kama Bone matter. So the natures of this Kama Bone, uh, this Gati is mainly produced, is determined by Kama, but it's not only Kama, it's Kama is there. Then Sanjati Gati happens, has happened due to the natural law of the universe. It's called Sabhava Niyama. Sometimes the beings karma can affect the nature of Sanjati Gati temporarily. Sometimes because of the karma, if the being is very strong, very powerful, it can affect the nature even. Like for example, Buddha mentions in the Dhammapada, Dullabo Purisa Janyo Naso Sabhatta Jayati. Very rare is a uh, well bred means a well uh, meritorious being. Uh, who has fulfilled a lot of paramis. When he is born there, Yattaso Jayati Diro Tans Kulan Sukhamedati, the entire family, the entire country comes into happiness because of the arising of this special being. It's referred to the Bodhisattva. So when he is born, sometimes even the weather conditions change. This is temporary always because of the effects of his strong kamas. So others may also get these effects. We talked about this as Nisanda Pala in, the, in, a, in a one lecture. We'll detail it, uh, we briefly talked about this. How the Akusala Kammas can also affect to others who are together with him, like what happened to Losaka and the Ananda Seti. And the Kusala Kammas may also affect the other beings. So, likewise, sometimes a being's Kamma, a being's Kamma, apostrophe S, being's Kamma, can affect the nature of Sanjati Gati temporarily. A being's Kamma, right? It's apostrophe S. So it's it's now gati gati or gati 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 means the life. Now I go into the sutta. As the gati gati is conventionally referred as beings, the above fundamentals suggest that some characteristics of beings are mainly decided by the nature of the kama due to which they are born. 
This is what the Buddha mentioned in Chulla Kamma Vibhanga Sutta. When the Subha Manavaka asked the question, why some beings are living long, why are so attractive, why some are having uh, sickness very regularly, and why some are wealthy, so forth. So when this question was asked, Buddha mentioned, this is the Patipada, this is the practice to become, to have a long life. This is the practice to have a healthy life. So he gave mention, he gave a list of kammas, good and bad kammas. Why someone is having a short life? Why kamma, someone is having a very long life? Because mainly because of the good and bad deeds he has done in the samsara. So therefore, certain attributes of our gati is determined by this karma. Right? You can read this. It's a very long list is given. Then we go to the uh, next one, one six five. More over the temperaments, dispositions, charita. Charita means our characteristic, characters of a human being is also decided by the nature of the kamma which gave the river. This idea is explained as usada kittana within the tradition. You can find this in the uh, lit commentary and literature. This seems like this was a fundamental which got originated after the Buddha has passed away. So. The, this is found only in the commentary literature. So, Usada Kittana. Usada Kittana means why do we have certain qualities, good and bad qualities, excessively in ourselves. Some are hot tempered, some are very kind, mild, some are very intelligent, some are very, uh, how to say, retarded, very difficult, they are difficult for them to understand. Uh, uh, deep philosophical or deep points. So what is this nature? Why such characteristics are seen in beings? According to the commentarial tradition of the Theravadis, they consider this is because of the Patisandhi Kama, the Kama which gave the Patisandhi. So when, the, when for example, last time we discussed uh, about the Omaka and Ukuta Kamas, if you remember. A kamma becomes superior or inferior based on the surrounding nature of the kamma. We said that kamma, we had three ways like if the objective, the motive is wrong, the kamma becomes inferior. While we do the action, if hindrances arise time to time regularly, this becomes inferior. After doing, we regret upon the kamma. That also becomes inferior. So, a kusala kamma, the quality of a kusala kamma can be degraded by hindrances or the wrong motives that are surrounding this kamma. In the, in, now, here the temperament is decided not based on the defilements that arise regularly, it is based on the suppression. Suppression. It means we may do wholesome deeds, but at that time, our mind, at when we are doing a good deed, no akusala can appear. Time to time it may appear that is possible, but sometimes we do a wholesome deed, but our mind has not fully suppressed certain defilements. For example, when we are attached to something or someone, we may do a wholesome deed. So at that time, while we are doing the wholesome deed, the loba has got suppressed. Loba has no opportunity to arise. But it is not fully suppressed. So it means the effects of the loba are seen in this kama. It is affecting the kama. It doesn't mean loba arises here. There is no akusala mula here. It affects. But in such a case, for example, if his dosa is fully suppressed, he has a very pleasant mind, he's a very kind person, dosa is fully suppressed. At that time, that effects of dosa are not seen. This moha is fully suppressed, for example. So effects of moha are not seen. Do loba didn't get an opportunity, but it is not well suppressed at that time. In such a case, when this karma gives a rebirth as a vipata, patisandhi, and this will be the bhavanga. The same chit similar chitta is arising as bhavanga. So now what happens? This now bhavanga chit, uh, our normal chittas arise from the bhavanga, right? We emerge from the bhavanga, so the normal vittis. 
So since this vipata is produced by a karma, affected by loba, because loba was not meant suppressed, dosa and moha were suppressed. So the effects were seen. Therefore, his mind is prone to loba very easily. He becomes a very intelligent person, very kind person, but at the same time, he is prone, he is very easy to get attached. He may have strong attachment. The same way, sometimes loba is suppressed, dosa is not much suppressed, moha is suppressed. He is a very intelligent, detached being, but hot tempered. So, likewise, now I think you can see this uh, possibilities. So, in this manner, the what sort of car defilements are suppressed? The level of the suppression of the defilements, while we do the wholesome deed, which brings the patisandhi, decides the temperament of a being. So that is how now in Vishuddhi Magga, I think some of you have read, there is a very long exposition about the charita. In charita means characteristics given by Venerable Buddha Gosa. In the end, having given all this information, he says, don't think about any other possibility according to, and he gives a very long disposition, and he doesn't, it seems he doesn't agree with this explanation much. This is how the teachers would explain about charita. Some are, some are acceptable, some ideas are acceptable. So what he says is, in the end, you have to go and understand why a charita is such and such, because of ussada kittana. Ussada kittana means this phenomenon. It means what sort of defilement, how the, but to what level the suppression has happened with regard to defilements, while we do the karma, which brings forth the next rebirth. So that is why, for an, and also, it doesn't mean that what we practice in the sansara doesn't cause for our character. This means like, for example, if some, we have done lots of uh, uh, asubha in sansara, if, for example, this person's Kama is affected by Loba, so he may have such a defect in his life. But if he puts effort, uh, if he has practiced Asubha for a long period in Sansara, easily he may overcome this Loba. So there is a, it doesn't mean that everything, the character is fixed, but it has a great influence into our lives. It's very difficult to overcome, that is the one point. But if we have practiced lots of uh, good, admirable qualities throughout the life, this, uh, this can come to our help. So that is why in some lives, for example, some lives, the Bodhisattva, who could even give his flesh to animals for their hunger, to cease their hunger, in some lives, he has been a plunderer, he has been a thief, murderer, has no compassion toward others. So how could this happen? If if the sansara, like the, what we practice in sansara, are affecting from life to life, it has to be like we are having a build up. We become good in this life, next life we start from there, next life we start from there. That's how we normally say. But we have to think in, in between, there is a big, I would call a barrier or a big uh, new thing coming. That is the nature of the Patisandhi. So that is why even the Bodhisattva has continuously, continuously practiced wholesome deeds for a longer period. In some life from birth, from very childhood, he has been a compassionate being, even giving dana from very small, uh, very young childhood. But in some lives from the very young, young age, he has been a cruel person. The thing is, his wholesome qualities get a buffer here sometimes. That means, some, in some lives, he has born, he has been born, he may be, maybe he is born with the karma affected by dosa. So, he acts cruelly, cruel in certain lives. So, that's in the commentary, the commentary says in a certain Jataka, why is such a thing happened to Bodhisattva? Is it because of the nature of his Patisanti? What does it mean? Nature of Patisanti is decided by the karma which gave the river. So the Kamma is affected by, it's a Kusala Kamma, it's not a Kusala Kamma, that's why he's a human. So it's affected by the Kelesas, which were suppressed at that time. So if the Dosa has affected his life, his Kamma, he can be a cruel person. So that is why even in, in the life stream of such a great being, these kinds of 
uh, defects can appear. So if it happens, Bodhisattva is nothing to say about us, right? So therefore, we cannot guarantee, even you practice fully in this life, in the recent, very next samsara lives, what sort of a being we may be. It mainly decides on the Parkhamma which gives the person. But the next thing is, the Bodhisattva, even being born in such lives, in some cases, having lived for a long, long time, doing bad things, sometimes he recognizes faults, gives, give up them, his, give up his bad occupation, and goes to the forest and even attain jhana and go to the Brahma. Why is that? Because of the wholesome practice he has done in the samsara. That is why I say, if you have practiced good things, they may come to your rescue. So it's easy for him to change his character. So what we have to do is we cannot decide always what sort of a karma is going to give our rebirth. So what we can do is just practice wholesome deeds as much as possible. Even we are born with a karma with some defects. Defects here doesn't mean ahetuka patisandhi. It means like affected by defilements. So in such a life even, sometimes we will be able to overcome these defects because of the force of some wholesome qualities. Supanisaya. So therefore, the temperament is also decided by the karma. So we say, now these are the points that the gati is greatly affected by karma. Right? Not the sanjati gati, not the realm we are born in. The being is affected by karma. One is the invention of the Subha Sutta. Now this is the uh, characters, the temperaments. According to this explanation, the effect of loba, effect of loba, dosa and moha to the karma which gave Patisandhi while it is being done is the main reason for one to become a Raga Charita, Dosa Charita or Moha Charita. Moha Charita or Misaka Charita. Misaka means having few characters. Loba Dosa and Loba Dosa Moha or two, two or three. On the admirable side, suppression of Loba Dosa and Moha while the Patisandhi Dayaka Kamma is being done causes for one to be de a detaching character, cool tempered character, if you have a good word, please suggest. Then intelligent character and also a character with two or three abandoned admirable qualities. Right? So then, next point, some physical uh, appearances are also determined by the past karma. That is to say, the karma which gave the rebirth or the other karmas. Or it can be the because of the karma which gave the rebirth, we may have a certain appearance and also because of the other kamas that we have the sansara. If you go into the Bala Pandita Sutta of Majjhima Nikaya, Buddha mentioned that when a person who has done abandoned of Akusalas, Akusala is born in the human realm, having suffered in woeful realms for very long period. So after a long time, if he is born in the uh, human realm, Buddha mentions, he may be ugly, unsightly and mishappen, sickly, blind, triple-handed, lame or paralyzed due to the akusalas he has done in the past. So this is a teach take, he taken from the Bala Pandita Sutta. Then on the other hand, the Lakana Sutta, Buddha mentioned the special wholesome deeds he had. Right? Ha, ha, no, he had. He had done in past lives. So he possessed 32 signs of a great man, Mahapurisa Lakana. He mentions specifically what sort of wholesome deed caused this sign. Right? So likewise, our physical appearance is also greatly affected by the past karma. Literature also recognizes wholesome deeds that makes one clever in future. That is called Panya Sangmatta Nika Kusala. I think most of you will be interested in this. So there are some kusala, wholesome deeds that makes you wise in sansa. That is called Panya Sangmatta Nika Kusala. Panya Sangmatta Nika Kamma. As stated in Visuddhi Bhagatika, preaching Dhamma to others and training others in religious skill, righteous skills, crafts and science will, also, will lead one to be wise in future lives in samsara. And also facilitating Dhamma talks. Like for example, there was a king, Duttagamini Abhaya, uh, Sri Lankan, and he saved the country from the invaders and uh, upheld the Buddha Sasana. So he also studied Dhamma and he wanted to accumulate this Kapanya Sangmatanika. He knew preaching Dhamma is a good deed to get wisdom. Dhamma Dana. So then he arranged, uh, uh, he said, I want to preach Dhamma. So the monks also gathered. So there were Arahans at that time, according to our literature. So he, he was given the higher seat and uh, he, he was asked to 
preach the Dhamma. So he couldn't uh, uh, say the Dhamma, and it's like uh, in, when, when he was seeing the uh, Sangha, right? when he seen the Sangha in front of him right he was he was like he could he held the uh, fan but he he was unable, the king was unable to preach Dhamma because of the respect he had towards the Sangha and he was he was going to now he was going to teach the Sangha right he was so uh, scared afraid and he was like he started to sweat and then he suddenly get down from the seat and paid respect and said Bhante uh, this is so much difficult for me. Please, uh, please tell me another way to give the Dhamma Dana. Then he said, the Sangha said, if you are unable to preach, you can facilitate Dhamma Talks. Like, build halls for Dhamma Talks. Give uh, special Dana for the preachers. Give, so what he did was he uh, arranged uh, lots of charity for the Dhamma preachers. And also he built Dhamma halls in the country so people could listen to Dhamma easy. So these are all included in Panya Sangmatanika Kusala. It's not only uh, preaching Dhamma and teaching others. If you facilitate the Dhamma talks, if you facilitate other studies, give support to the schools, uh, encourage students to study, give them books. So these are all considered as Panya Sangmatanika Kusala. You can be wise in Sansara. Right? And the other way, there is a Kamma that makes you foolish. That is found in the Kamma Vipaka, uh, Vipa, uh, Duchanta Vipaka Sutta, that is being alcoholic. So, being alcoholic, having lots of uh, uh, drugs taking, because at that time our mind comes into a state, it's an it's a, uh, uncontrolled, unrestrained state, it's not a natural state. So if someone has uh, frequently done this, uh, drinking alcohol, Buddha mentions that it would cause him to be um, sane or mad uh, in, uh, in insane, right? Uh, it's mad in the insane, right? Sorry, in, he has changed insane in the uh, sansara, right? Insane in the sansara, yeah. So then, these are the points that we can see how a kamma determines. And also, if you look into many suttas, like having given dana, Buddha mentioned a certain person is born in the devas. He, sorry, overcome others in terms of luxuries, in terms of his life, in terms of his glory. He overcomes others in terms of beauty. So therefore, these are also affecting the. Uh, the life of the beings. Like there are lots of evidences to show that karma is affecting the beings. So it means karma, we are born with a karma, we are affected with karma, sometimes affected with karma. So it means we are a production of karma. That is what I want to emphasize. But the next fundamental say, however, there is also a natural law that determines the basic that determines, right? Determines the basic physical and mental qualities and skills of beings according to the species they are born into. That is another point. Some of these similarities can be traced with the genetical connection of the offspring with their parents in Gabbasiyaka beings. Gabbasiyaka means uh, ones who are born out of a womb or egg, both, because they all remain in the mother's womb for a certain while. So, therefore, they are, it can be traced with the genetical relation. Some Opapatika beings, even have such similarities in their appearance, such as subtle form that is not sensitive to human eyes. In all the petas, whatever the kamma they are born, they are subtle, they can be seen. All the devas can be seen to human eyes. Does it mean they share a common characteristic? And also skills such as devas hearing and seeing far away sounds and forms. These traits are despite the nature of the kamma, they are born due to. That law is called Yoni Niyama. So it means, despite the Kamma, if we are born into a Peta realm, we are not going to have a gross body like this, even though it's a gross Kamma. So it shows that there is a, some, some uh, species called Peta. That is a universal uh, trait, that's a universal kind of uh, uh, characteristic. So, when we are born into this species, Buddha could categorize us as a beta. Even though 10 people are born with 10 different kammas, completely different natures. 
So they all possess a similar characteristic. That's why Buddha could term them as a group of petas. And they all possess a similar subtle rubus. Doesn't mean their appearance can be completely changed, completely different. Some are like pythons, some are like skeletons, some are like elephants. Petas have very different appearances. But this, they do possess some certain uh, uh, fundamental common characteristics. What does it mean? There is a certain phenomenon called yoniniyama. It means these petas have a similar characteristic. For example, if you are born in the Tusita realm, naturally the beings are very happy. So that is the that is a trait of this this uh, this realm, Tusitas. If someone is born in the Nimmana Rati, Paranimita Vasavati, others would create things. Or your servants would create what you want, having known your mind. Your servant devas. So these are the common characteristics of these realms. It shows that there is a certain universal law which governs the, uh, these species, natures of the species. So what happens is, humans are also, for example, humans has the ability to walk uh, vertically, not like the animals. So we all possess similarity. So our connection with our offspring can be traced with the genetical connection. So it is logical to us. But when it, when it comes to the Upapatika beings within our literature also, we find they also share similar characteristics. So it means there are certain groups of species into which we are born. So this grouping has happened as a natural law. So we call this as Yoni Niyama. So the, what the karma does it? Karma chooses this niyama. Chooses means based on the karma, the intensity of their karma, power of our karma. According to that, our yoni will be decided. Then our basic appearance is decided based on the characteristics of the yoni. Someone may be born as a cat because of a panatipata or because of a adhinadana. Possible. Many karmas can be born as a cat. But all the cats have a similar appearance. So therefore, and also one may be born as a, that can be, someone can say that can be traced because of the genetical connection with the mother. So if someone is, 10 people are born as petas, all will have a subtle rupa. Why they are all sub, have a subtle rupa? Because the yoni of the species of petas share a common characteristic. So that is called the Yoni Niyama. Whenever Lady Sayadu has addressed this regarding the, uh, regarding the genetical connection, but I also extend this one and say there is a common uh, traits shared by all the different species. And then when the law of karma and Yoni Niyama are merged, when you merge these together, we can say that basic natures of beings are determined by the law of species and spend special attributes such as long life or short life and extra beauty or agnes are decided by the past karma. So that's how we come into these two together. So Yoni Niyama decides our basic characteristics but among the animals we see some dogs are really attractive than others. It's not just because it looks like his father or mother, there is some unexplainable attraction in some beings. So these are because of the karma has caused this, right? So likewise, Kama has decided or these special attributes. Moreover, as the destination is also decided by Kama, which comes forth as a death, near death moment to give the following rebirth, because which species we are born in is decided on the Kama which gives the rebirth. We can also say species in which one is born is also decided by the nature of the Kama. So the nature of the Kama, so it means If I draw it in a diagram just to explain what does it mean. If we take, this is the species. What species here? Species here, yes. 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 Species here, Kamma, based on that, if we have different kind of species,
Kama would decide. Decide based on the karma, we are born as a peta or an animal or whatever. So when we are born in that species, that species, Yoni Niyama, governs our nature, basic characteristics. Done by Yoni Niyama. Then some special characteristics. Like extra beauty, long life, health, uh, health, uh, distinction, distinct health, and all these are desired by karma. Again, it can be this karma or another karma. So likewise, <clears throat> when we are talking about a certain being, also we should know it's not just the outcome of just karma. Karma is not deciding everything. There is something called a species, in Pali we call it yoni. So this also affects the nature of the being. So when both comes together, we can explain the nature of the, uh, the quality of a being. So that's what in the <clears throat> next paragraph it says, commenting on this notion, Venerable Mahasiva, a teacher highly acclaimed in commentaries who lived in ancient Ceylon, says that species in which a being is born is determined by the nature of the karma and the appearance of the being such as a cat, dogs, cats, dogs and humans is decided by the nature of the species. So nature of the species means yoning yamitic. It means there is some phenomenon which governs you. So therefore we have a phenomenon like we have a quality called cat quality. We have a human quality, right? So they will be, it is already something, it's a natural phenomenon that we cannot overcome. So therefore, even a bodhisattva is appeared as a lion, he'll have the qualities of a lion roaring and all this. Even as a person who is very restrained, unfortunately born in the animal realm, a fox realm, he'll be, he'll be starting saying, uh, uh, shouting like a fox, right? So that, because that's are the qualities that he inherits, inherits with his birth. And for example, if you go into the uh, Patisambhida Magga, we, Patisambhida Magga, we also call about Kamma Vipaka Jaiddi. That are something, some qualities that are inherited by certain beings, like birds able to fly, fish are able to swim, sustaining the water. These are the qualities that are inherited by these beings. It's not because of their past kammas or past skills. Whoever is born there, they will have that skill. There's nothing to worry about. So likewise, there are certain attributes that are determined by this phenomenon, natural law. So this is what I want to emphasize in this lecture. So here we talked about uh, the kamma, uh, the gati, sorry, gati, uh, which is an outcome of kamma. And gati was twofold as the aggregates, kamma born aggregates, and also the realm in which they appear. And uh, we mentioned the nature of these aggregates are exclusively determined by the karma, and the realm is determined by a natural law. It's a natural law. Then, uh, when uh, someone is born into a certain life, uh, into a certain life, uh, that certain characteristics like long uh, life or health, ex uh, distinct health, extra beauty, and his characters some bodily appearances, distinct appearances, some mental qualities such as wisdom and the negative qualities such as delusion are also based on the, sometimes are based on the past kammas, but at the same time there is a phenomenon that we cannot overcome which is the law of the species, knowledge of the species. So nature of the species is found in the realm. So, nature of the species, when we talk about the realm, for an example, realm is now in the Tusita realm, or human realm, we talk. We humans have a yoni, that's a human species. And also the human realm has a physical appearance. That is fully determined by the natural law. That is called Sabhava Siddha law, it's a natural law. So, within that human realm, we are talking about the human species, we call it the yoni niya. For example, if we go to the Tusita realm, we, we can observe three 
root three next three phenomena happen in there one is the appearance of the tusita realm that is something a natural phenomenon happening is a natural law then all the species who are born in the tusita realm share common characteristics that is the yoni niyama in tusita then some beings who are born, different beings who are born in tusita realm possess some distinct characteristics some are, some have uh, extra uh, attractive appearance some someone's glory is very high someone has more luxuries so that is disabled by his karma so therefore when we talk about this entire uh, life we have to look into this in three aspects some would uh, deny the karma some would deny the uh, these natural laws so then we come into wrong idea i'll talk about this in the end of the next lecture so these are the points that i want to emphasize here so if you have any questions Because of kamma, the realm is decided or yes. not? Yes, decided. decided. Which realm you are born in is decided. That is decided because of kamma. kamma yeah. And same kamma will also give the spatial characteristics. No, it can be the same kamma or different kamma. But there is only one kamma. That's why. That's why we talked about in the previous lectures. Patisandhi kamma can be supported by other kammas. Can be obstructed by other kammas. For example, someone may lose his eyesight by birth. That can be happen because of the weakness of his patisandhi kamma, or another kamma is obstructing him, right? So it's not only the patisandhi. Okay. So no question. So we'll start in another 15 minutes.